Hello everyone, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts and I am finally back for another um, cross stitch update. I apologize that it's been like another month and a half again. I just, uh, it, it's the time of year, you guys know. It's just been crazy busy and every time I thought I had a minute to film, the kids were going crazy or something and then we were with family for Thanksgiving. By the way, happy Thanksgiving um, to all of my fellow Americans. I hope it was wonderful. I hope you got to be with loved ones and you ate lots of delicious food. I definitely ate way too much. But anyway, I am here. I am here for an update and I have so much to show you guys. So, so much. So. I'm gonna try and get right into it, otherwise we're gonna be here forever. Um, it has been a very good stitchy month and a half for me. Uh, last time I spoke to you with an update, I was telling you how I hadn't really had much of a stitchy bug for the, you know, the three months beforehand. My stitchy bug has come back with a vengeance. Oh my word, all I wanna do is sit and stitch. I have three finishes to show you, um, three new starts, one of which is almost a finish already, uh, and lots of whip progress and some changes that I've made to some of my works in progress, so buckle up. Uh, <laughs> let's get into it. Um, oh, quick baby bump update. Uh, we are doing very well. Baby and I are both healthy. We did find out baby number three is another boy, <laughs> so... Boy number three, here's a little bump update. There you go. I feel like I look so much more pregnant than I actually am. I don't know, I think it's because it's my third kid. Those of you who've had, sorry, those of you who've had multiple children, tell me if I'm wrong, but I swear I was like three months pregnant and all of a sudden, boom, huge belly. And so I'm really almost five months pregnant, but I look like I'm like eight months pregnant. <laughs> Anyway, um, but we're doing great, feeling good, um, baby's healthy. We had the, the big halfway point um, anatomy scan and everything looks great. He's a happy, wiggly little guy. He partic particularly likes kicking me in my bladder in the middle of the night. Thanks, child. We do have a few names picked out. We're pretty traditional. Um, obviously, my first son is named Charles and my second son is named Henry. So we like traditional names and we are kind of going, but we have two that we like. We really like James and we really like Andrew. And so this one will probably be James or Andrew, we're not sure. Um, but anyway, so thank you all for your kind comments and your sweet congratulations. And yes, we are doing just great. Baby boy and I are fantastic. Um, finishes. I have three. Two of these were finished before Halloween, and then I got into working on other whips and had a bunch of new starts, and so I only have one more finish that was post-Halloween, but the first two were my two Halloween pieces. I got them both done before Halloween. So the first one is my Prairie Schooler, Knock Knock. These are kind of the little mini charts, and I have four of them. There's more than four. I think there's five or six that are all in this kind of similar vein, about the same size, the same kind of color scheme. Um, but there were four that I really liked, and um, so I have two stitched now, but I did finish Knock Knock. So here you go. There is Knock Knock. And it's on the same piece of fabric with the one I stitched last year, which is Who's There. Um, so you can see them both. I stitched this um, in the called for DMC um, with uh, three strands over two. Three over two on 25 count ivory Lugana or cream Lugana, I can't remember. It's either ivory or cream. Um, and I stitched it three over two. So that black is actually not black, it's 3371. And then the orange um, is 921. And DMC so it looks great the coverage with three strands over two is great on 25 count I mean you can see a little bit through it but honestly I mean from back here this is only like a foot away from the camera and it looks nice and opaque so in case you're a, you ever want to stitch um, over two on 25 count Lugana three strands of DMC works really well so there's <laughs> there's knock knock 
and then who's there from last year. So I'm halfway done with those. I have two more that I wanna do. One is Night Flight and the other one is gonna escape me, sorry. I can't remember, but um, the plan is eventually to finish these window pane style. I had originally thought, you know, a wall hanging with like a little window pane style. Um, that may still be the way I finish it. You know, we've all been so inspired by Priscilla and Chelsea recently that I've been, you know, toying with the idea. I wonder if I could find like a, a window pane with four openings and I don't know if I'm gonna try and do that, but I'm halfway done with those. So I'm probably not gonna start the next one until next year sometime, maybe for Stitch Mania, maybe for Halloween, I don't know. But that was my first finish. Um, my next finish for Halloween was my only other Halloween whip that I had going, and this was a new start just a few months ago. This one is Magic Potion by Sandra Cozzolino. It's from Imaginating. And I realized as I was pulling it out to do this video that it's actually not totally done. I realized I forgot to go back in and do all of the French knots. You can see on these little bats, they have tiny little orange eyes. Same on the bird and same on the newt, I think. Yeah, and the frog. All the little creatures have French knot eyeballs. And I forgot to do that. I took it off my Q-snap and, because it was finished, and I never actually went in and did the French knots. So I will go do those. <laughs> I actually really enjoy French knots. Um, I figured out how to do them a couple years back and I really like them. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with French knots and prefer like a colonial knot or use beads. I like French knots, they work. Um, they're not too bad for me. So I will go back and add those little glowing orange eyeballs. But other than the eyeballs, it's finished. It's so cute, you guys. It's adorable. I mean, it's a little bit cutesy for me. I really struggled with the heart on the cauldron. There's part of me that was like, I'm not stitching that heart. I'm just gonna make it all black. But I, when it came down to it, I decided to go ahead and do the heart. So it's a little bit cutesy, but honestly, taken as a whole, I think this piece is adorable. It's really colorful, and these little witches are just so fun. Like, look at the patterns in their skirts and their crazy red hair, and I just, oh, I just love it. I think it's so fun. So, that is Magic Potion, and I stitched this in the Called For DMC. I didn't make any color changes, and I stitched this on 32 count Belfast Linen in Dirty from Zweigart. So a nice kind of dark khaki um, color. So I need to go add the eyeballs, because right now all of my animals have no eyes, but other than that, it's done. Yay! So two Halloween finishes. I now have no more Halloween whips in my whip pile. My whip pile is shrinking, and I'll tell you more about that. That's exciting. My third um, finish that I am really proud of, I went crazy on this project. I finished all my Halloween pieces, and I immediately wanted to jump into Christmas stitching. And um, I worked on a couple different Christmas pieces and then I pulled this one out and I was like, you know what? I wanna finish this this year. So I went gangbusters on this thing and it was only half done when I pulled it out and it's finished, guys. And it's so beautiful, I love it so much. So this you will remember from um, Stitch Mania two years ago in 2015. I started Twas the Night by Sue Hillis. It's just, it, there are no words for how beautiful this pattern is. I mean, it's so elegant and classy and just the colors are gorgeous. And I mean, the all the different fonts for the writing are just so fun to stitch. The border is a little bit of a beast and I will uh, reiterate what has been said by Carolyn Mazio and um, Jennifer Apodaca or Apodaca, I, Jennifer, sorry, I don't remember how to say your name. They both stitched this a couple years ago and both of them said the same thing, don't leave the border for last. <laughs> 
Don't do all the writing first and then think you're gonna go in and do that border. And I agree with them 100% because that border is a beast. I mean, in those leaves, there's like six or seven different colors of green and then they're backstitched in a single strand of 3371. All of those little berries, there are actually four different patterns for berries, and so every berry on here is different from the one next to it, different colors, and each berry has like four or five colors in it. So just do yourself a favor and do the border in chunks, like alternate between writing and border, writing and border, and that's what I did. I had the whole bottom half done from St. Nicholas and all of the bottom border, and then I went up, and what I did is I stitched all the writing up to here, so I didn't do the first two lines, Twas the Night Before Christmas, I left that off, and I did all of the top border, which took a while. And then I went back to like finish the project and put in those last few um, lines of writing, because I knew that if I finished all the writing and only had border left, I would find it more difficult to be motivated to finish it. Whereas if I finished the border first and still had a few lines of writing to finish, that would be more exciting. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me, and so that's what I did, and it worked really well. Pause for a second. I wanna apologize for the lighting. It is nighttime, and I did the best I could with lighting. I think it's pretty decent. I had to turn off the overhead light because it was just like blinding, but I'm sorry that the lighting's not great. I just have no time in daylight hours. There's so few daylight hours now. Just can't do it, but anyway, without further ado. There is Twas the Night. Oh, look at the sparkle. You can see the sparkle really well. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Guys, I'm so proud of this. It was a really glorious, like, Hark the Herald Angels Sing moment when I had these two sides of border done and they met up in the middle exactly where they should. I was so nervous because I had done all of this border on this side and all this border on this side and I knew if they don't match up I'm just gonna fudge it because there is a little bit of a, an arch right here and I knew that if something didn't meet up exactly right that I could kind of fudge it right there but it was perfect. I couldn't believe it. It was a straight up miracle. Um, but look at how sparkly that fabric is. This is stitched on 32 count um, raw gold linen from Zweigart. So it's it's one of their opalescent fabrics. It's the raw linen color, but with the gold threads. And it just shimmers and shines like nobody's business. Um, so there's a little close up. That, what is in frame now, is what I had done before, like a month ago. And this is everything I did in the past month. So I, like I said, I went gangbusters on this. Um, I stitched it in the called for colors, except I made a change. Um, it is charted for Sullivan's floss, but she also has a DMC conversion. And I used the DMC conversion with the exception of the golds for the, um, the border, these yellow golds. There are two gold colors, a darker one and a lighter one. And the DMC conversion that she had, um, was for 676 and 677 and when I pulled them they were kind of pale and washed out and in the cover photo you can see they're really bright yellow golds and I liked that. I liked the brighter yellow golds and so I went ahead and converted those to 3820 and 3822. So that is the one change I made. Everything else is stitched in the called for DMC that she provides but there it is. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And originally, I, I have fabric that I already purchased from Joann's when I bought this pattern to make it into a wall hanging, and I haven't decided yet because I think it could be a really beautiful wall hanging. It's like a deep burgundy fabric with like um, gold metallic ivy and holly leaves on it. It's really beautiful, very Christmassy, very elegant. It would look great with this. But I almost feel like, oh, there's my back. Wait, no, there's, that is my back, sorry. I can't, it's backwards for me because I'm filming. It probably won't be backwards for you. That is the front. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, now that it's done and it's so beautiful, 
I kind of want to have it framed. I just, I feel like this deserves to be framed in a beautiful, like, ornate, scrolly, gold, Christmassy looking frame with like maybe a nice burgundy mat or something like a burgundy velvet mat. I used to work in a framing shop. <laughs> so I'm sitting here thinking like a burgundy velvet mat and then with a gold, ornate gold kind of scrolly looking frame. I don't know. It would be very expensive to frame, but oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful. All right, I'll shut up about that. <laughs> it's my favorite finish of like the last year, probably. So really proud of that. Twas the Night by Sue Hillis. Cannot recommend this pattern more. It was so, sorry, I just bumped the table. <sighs> Cannot recommend it more. It was really fun to stitch, even the border, which was a little bit of a bear, but you just do it. I don't know, I just loved it. So. Those are my three finishes. Oh, stop shaking the table now. Sorry. I also had three new starts because <laughs> I'm hopeless. One of which really needed to be a new start and I started this, worked on it for about two days and haven't touched it since. Um, mostly because the fabric is just a pain. But I did because I am having another baby. I had to start another stocking. You guys know I do the Dimensions Gold stockings for every member of my family. So far, all of us have one. So I started the one that was in my stash waiting for a future baby. And this is called um, Christmas Eve Fun Stocking. It's very beautiful. They're getting their Christmas tree and bringing it home. And uh, it's just really festive and pretty. I did go ahead and start it. I didn't get very far. I'll show you. I started with some of the house some of the light browns and reds in the windows and the golds in the windows and doors um, of the house. So there's not much, but just to kind of orient you. And this, there you go, this Ada, guys, do you hear that? It's like cardboard. <laughs> and I've stitched all my other stockings on the provided Ada. I know I can deal and just suck it up and do it. And I will, I absolutely will, but I'm not feeling real like urgent about this one because baby's not coming until next year. So it doesn't need to be done by this Christmas. So I have like a year. And uh, I did whip one of my son's stockings out in like three months because I was down to the wire. So I'm giving myself much more time than I did with that one. So I'm not feeling real anxious about it, but this Ada is just such a pain. It's so scratching it like, I almost feel like it cuts up my hand when my hand like rubs against the raw edge. I might have to like, I might zigzag over the edge, not because it's fraying a lot, it's not, just to like make that edge not so sharp. But anyway, that's as far as I got. It's really not much of a start, but it is a start. And so that was one of my new starts, is Christmas Eve fun stocking for baby boy number three. The other start I had, I was really proud of myself that I didn't start this and I waited and then all of my self-restraint went out the window. I don't regret anything. I did go ahead and start the Snooty Parrot Sampler by Barbara Anna. I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to so badly. I had the linen, I had all of the called for threads and I was just dying to start it. So this is a very tiny picture and it's not going to focus, but Sorry, that, that's the best I can do. That is, wait, no, there is a big, I bought this one at the Silver Needle. What am I doing? I'm like thinking this is one of those ones I bought online. No, I bought this at the Silver Needle. There's the Snooty Parrot Sampler. Look at how beautiful and vibrant and I just love that. It is not a reproduction sampler. sampler. It is meant to look as if it's a reproduction sampler but it's not, it is an original design. And uh, I am stitching this, um, it's charted for all Gentle Arts um, sampler threads, cottons. So I'm stitching it in all the called for colors. I'm stitching it one over two on 40 count. This is 40 count Meadow Rue by Lakeside Linens. It's not vintage Meadow Rue, it's just a regular Meadow Rue. And um, I have the first page almost done. There's like, I think there's nine pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the first page is almost done, which is the top left hand corner. And there it is. 
So this is my first like prim antique looking sampler. It's not a reproduction sampler, but it's supposed to look like one and it's my first one. And I really like it. I like how um, each little motif that you stitch is like its own little finish. Um, that's really fun and motivating. I love stitching one over two on 40 count. I totally get now why so many people only like to stitch with one thread. Because your stitches look awesome, always. <laughs> There's never any twisting threads. I mean, you can really see the variegation in that tulip. Um, and in the lettering, you can see the variegation really well. That. I can't remember what color that is. That's not the rhubarb. The rhubarb is a different color. Anyway, and in the green, it's just really, that's baby spinach, I think, by Gentle Arts. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I get why people like to stitch one over two on 40 count and then have trouble going back to anything else because your stitches look fantastic. And honestly, the 40 count, um, I'm still relatively young. I don't know. I'm not like a teenager. I'm 31. Um, and my eyesight is still good enough that as long as I have my ot light on behind me, um, I don't need a magnifier yet. And so 40 count is not too hard for me. If someday it does get to be more of a challenge, I will totally get um, some cheaters or a magnifier or something because I really like stitching one over two on 40 count. Who would have thought? Well, I knew that already since I started my um, Autumn at Hawker and Hollow piece. I already knew that I enjoyed that, but. So that is my Snooty Parrot sampler start. Just the top left corner. First page is almost done. I love it. I'm really excited that it started and I can't wait to get back to that, but honestly, it probably won't get worked on again until the new year because right now I'm thoroughly like seasonal stitching. I am all about the Christmas stitching and um, the November stitching, which is what I'm about to show you. My third and final new start, which is also almost to finish, um, I got the bug again to keep working on some of my monthly prairie schoolers. Um, I have all 12 of them. I only have one finished, April is done. And so I decided to pull out November and I'm doing the big ones, like the main chart. This is a reprint on the crappy paper. Sorry, it is kind of crappy. Um, Michelle of the Striped Rose was talking about how she got a reprint one and she was like, it's not even as nice as my own like home computer paper. It's true, it's kind of disappointing. But hey, at least I have the chart, right? Because this was out of print and selling for obscene amounts on eBay and Yay for the reprint. So we can all grumble about the paper quality, but honestly, at least the charts are available again. So this is November and I love it. I wasn't sure about these colors. They looked so dull and lifeless to me. And honestly, this, this picture is a fairly accurate representation of the colors in this piece. And I just, I remember I pulled them out and I was kind of looking at them. I was like, I don't know, they're kind of dull and ugly. <laughs> they're not very vibrant. And when I think of autumn, I think of vibrant, uh, you know, autumnal colors, pumpkin -y orange and bright gold and, you know, like the red of a Japanese maple when it changes color. And I was like, this is kind of ugly. And then I was stitching and I looked outside. This is what November looks like. October is bright and vibrant, at least where I live. And then November comes and this is what it looks like. All the leaves that were bright and crazy, you know, gorgeous autumnal colors fall off the trees. And when those bright red Japanese maple leaves are on the ground, they change to like a dark burgundy, like a, a burg, um, an ashy burgundy, does that even make sense? And the ground, the grass is kind of more gray than green and all the browns. So it's just funny because I was looking at this, the golds all deepen from like a bright yellow gold to kind of a, a brown gold. I don't know if this is making sense, but I was looking at the colors and not sure about them. And then I looked outside and I was like, 
that's what October looks like. And now that I'm almost done with this piece, I love the colors. I think they are so perfect. They are so November. So here is what I have on November. So I started in the middle, which is like here-ish, the chimneys, and I went all the way up, and this turkey is just the cutest ever. Um, love the turkey. <laughs> and then I am working on the last portion of the chart before the bottom border. So there's like the grass with the ABCs and then the fox and the turkey, and then there's this line of leaves, and that's the bottom of the piece. So right now, I'm just filling in. I did all of the inside stitching. Usually, I'm one of those weird obsessive stitchers who if something is in the foreground, something is you know closer to the viewer, I stitch that last. I wanna stitch that on top of anything that's in the background. So normally, being the obsessive stitcher that I am, I would have stitched all of the gray green grass first and then gone in and stitched the fox and the ABCs but I realized what a pain that was gonna to be to try and count around all of that because it's not, you know, it's not all lined up. Those ABCs are kind of scattered everywhere and I needed to have this hill um, in place so that I could put the trees on. And so I am doing it the other way this time, which feels a little strange for me, but it's fine. So I finished all of the inside stuff on this side and I'm just, you can see I'm starting to fill in the grass and then I'll go and do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll do the little bottom border, which only will go to about here. And this one will be done. I will have two of my Prairie Schooler months finished. Um, I really like it. This is kind of what I've been focusing on for the past couple of weeks. You know, well, I only started this like a week ago because I was finishing my Twas the Night. So, you know, I've been working on this for a week. Prairie Schoolers, they are stitch heavy, like stitch dense. There's a lot of stitching, but the colors are very simple and there's not that many. And um, the patterns are really, basic's not the right word. Simplistic, I don't know. It doesn't take very long to stitch. So I've only been working on this for a week. I mean, granted this is all I stitched on, but I'm stitching this in the called for DMC, called for colors on 32 count Belfast in cream or ivory, whichever. Um, this is a little nine by 13 cut from one, two, three stitch. If any of you wanna stitch these, they are perfect for those little nine by 13 cuts of um, fabric. 32 count, you know, these side borders are a little tight, so if you like to have more room than that, you'll probably want to go up to a 36 or a 40 count if you wanna stick with a nine by 13 cut or you just get a bigger piece of fabric. 28 count, you're gonna start getting a little close to the edge. So on 32 count, they fit really nicely on these little nine by 13 cuts that are like $3. Yay for cheap fabric. Um, so that is it as far as new starts. Um, I did work on one other whip believe it or not, even with all the things I finished and started. Um, I have put stitches in one more piece, and this is another one of my, sorry, the table is shaking again. This is another one of my um, Christmas whips. I pulled out my heirloom nativity sampler. Um, last Christmas, I had about 50% of this little shepherd band um, finished, and that's as far as I got. I started at the top, and I had down to this band finished and only about halfway done on that shepherd band. And I'm not even gonna take it out of the cue snap because you guys have seen it before and you know, but I finished the shepherds. So I have finished the shepherd band um, completely. So next I'll be going on to more specialty stitches with the white and then some more words and some more specialty stitches and then we'll start the three kings band. Um, I'll probably pick this up again when I finish my November Prairie Schooler piece because I really want to get back to Christmas stitching. Um, but I'm really happy with that. I think it looks really pretty. It's a very cute stitch. This tree was a pain in the butt. I can't, I don't think it's going to focus. It's too tiny. Um, all of these you can't really see. All of these little individual pine needles 
were stitched individually and they don't really follow any sort of rhyme or reason. And if I were less of an obsessive stitcher, I probably just would have gone in and done whatever I felt like, but I felt the need to follow the chart exactly. <laughs> so it was a lot of like my nose stuck in my pattern and do two stitches and then stuck in my pattern and do two more stitches. That was a bit annoying, but it's done and it looks beautiful. I'm stitching this um, on 32 count Lugana in the color Storm, I think. Storm, I think it's Storm. It's it's a hand dyed. Oh, Nell's stitching on a hand dyed, what? Um, it's a very subtle hand dyed. And I got this from 123 Stitch. I don't remember what maker it is. I don't remember if it's a Wichelt dyed fabric. It's a Lugana, which is a Zweigart fabric, but I don't know if it's a Zweigart dyed fabric or if it's Wichelt dyed it or I can't remember, but it's called Storm and it's 32 count. In hindsight, I wish I had stitched this on 28 count. Because it is dyed, it shrunk just a little so rather than 32 count, it's closer to like a 35 or 36 count. Um, and because I'm stitching it with the accessory pack, so it's all silks, silks are a little thicker than cottons. And so it's just ever so slightly bulky. I'm stitching it two over two. And in hindsight, it would have been better to go with a 28 count. It wouldn't have been quite so bulky. It's not so bulky that I feel like my stitches look ugly or like I don't wanna work on it, but it's just to the point where I'm like, yeah, I should have stitched it on 28 count rather than 32. And it's just, I think, because it's been dyed. I think if this was just a regular piece of Lugana, like a solid Lugana, 32 count would have been fine. Two over two with the silks, but because it's been dyed and it shrunk just a little bit, it's a little tight. So. Heads up, if you wanna stitch this or anything on Storm Lugana, I would recommend a 28 count, not the 32. But it looks fine. And it's just so dainty. It's like four and a half inches wide. I mean, it's I have small hands and it's just bitty. It's so cute. This is an eight by eight Q-snap and it's like, it doesn't even approach the edges. So it's really cute and dainty and I love it. So I will continue working on that. Um, that's all of the stitching I've done. It was a lot and I got a lot of things done. Um, I did also lose two additional whips from my whip pile. The first one is cause I adopted it out. Um, I know she's posted an Instagram photo of it already. So I feel comfortable telling you, but I went ahead and adopted my, um, Janlin winter sampler, um, which was a kit by Sandy Orton, I went ahead and adopted that out to um, Steph, Stephanie at Lindy Stitches. She loves that pattern, has loved it for a long time. And I was kind of going through my whips and honestly, I just wasn't excited to work on it. I didn't want to work on it. It wasn't a high priority. And it was like almost halfway done. Like I put a lot of work into that thing and I just couldn't see myself ever finishing it. And that was really making me sad. And so I contacted Steph and I told her, hey, I have this project. I don't think I'm ever gonna work on it. I know you love it. Do you want to adopt it from me and finish it? And she was so excited. So that made me feel good. It made me feel good that it was going to someone who's gonna love it and appreciate it and finish it. And um, yeah, so she's working on that. She, I believe has been working on backstitching that top half that I had all of the cross stitching done on because she loves to backstitch, go figure, crazy woman. Um, and then she'll go down and finish the bottom half and stitch that herself. So thank you, Stephanie, for adopting that project from me. I actually feel really happy that it's being worked on and my guilt has lessened that it's been sitting in my <laughs> whip pile being ignored for so long. The other one that has also left my whip pile because I just wasn't happy with it um, is my Country Cottage Needleworks Cottages of the Month. This is a project I started a couple months ago, maybe six months ago. I think it might have been for Stitch Mania. I can't remember. And it's the Cottages of the Month. You guys have seen them all a million times. I'm not going to show them to you, but I had made the decision at the time to stitch them all on one piece of fabric, a big giant piece with all 12 of the months on it. 
And the fabric I chose was 28 count flax, cashel linen. Um, and I'll show you, I had the first two months done in a good portion of March. Oh, it's safety pinned, whatever. If there's a safety pin holding the fabric identification tag on it. But I had January and February done in a good portion of March and they look beautiful. I don't dislike this fabric. I don't dislike the project. What I disliked was my decision to stitch them all on one, frankly. I just was feeling like, oh my gosh, this thing is gonna be a monster when it's done. And I don't think I'm really that excited to have this giant wall hanging because let's face it, I'm not gonna have that thing framed. It's gonna be huge. It's on a fat half and it would have taken up most of the fat half. Um, and I just couldn't see myself wanting to hang that on my wall all year. It's enormous. It'd be like a friggin' wall quilt. And I just was not happy with it. And I decided I would rather stitch them separately so I could change them out. Um, similar to how I'm doing the Prairie Schooler months. And so I thought about it and I thought about just, you know, because the, the way I stitched them on this, they were too close together to cut apart. There would have been no border at all to work with. And so that wasn't an option. I thought about, well, maybe I'll just, you know, pick out February um, and restitch that. And that way there'll be enough space between January and March so that they could be fine. And then I can stitch the rest with plenty of space. And then I was trying to do the calculations and I wasn't going to have enough fabric if I did that. Anyway, I had kind of a Nicole from Nicole's Needlework moment where that woman, she's amazing. If she's not happy with something, it doesn't matter how far she's gone on it. She'll just stop and start over on something that she's happier with. Like she, um, she was doing All Creatures Great and Small from Barbara Anna, I think is the piece. And she started that thing like four times. And every time that she restarted it on different fabrics, she had a good chunk of that bottom um, right corner finish. She stitched that bottom right corner at least three or four times. And she wasn't afraid to say, you know what? Yeah, I put a lot of work in, but I'm not happy with it. And it's a huge piece, so I'm going to restart it. So thank you, Nicole, for giving me the permission, whatever that means, to stop and restart it on, on um, different fabric. I have not restarted it yet, which is why it has left my whip pile, but I'll just show you. I have in this bag 12 pieces of 28 count cashel linen by Zweigart in the color Dirty, the same color I did um, Magic Potion on, kind of that dark khaki, I really like that color. Um, I have 12 pieces cut this size so that, you know, the piece will sit like right like that. It's the, they're the perfect size. Um, they'll fit in an eight by eight Q snap nicely. And so there's all my charts. I have all 12 of them. And now I have 12 pieces of linen cut. They're not surged or edged in any way. And I probably will need to do that because they are fraying a little bit. And they're not huge pieces and I don't have an enormous border, so I don't want them to fray too much. But so this has gone back into the kitted project pile. Um, that's just the way it goes. I'm much happier knowing that they're gonna be stitched individually. I feel much less overwhelmed by that. And now I have almost a whole fat half of 28 count flax cashel linen to put back in my fabric stash and use for something else. So, you know, I'm not gonna like pick all that stitching out. I'm not gonna cut them off and throw them away. I just am putting them, <laughs> the whole big piece back in my fabric stash. And someday I will have something to do on that. Um, I may do and a forest grew on that giant fat half. Um, Lindy, <laughs> Lindy, Stephanie of Lindy Stitches had a giveaway um, almost a year ago now, I think, that I won and she gave away a copy of Rosewood Manors and a forest grew. And it's huge. It's a very big piece. I'm not sure I want to stitch on 28 count, but I think it would fit on a fat half. Um, I don't know. I haven't decided. That one is not kitted up because I don't have any immediate plans to start it, but I would like to stitch it someday and uh, who knows. So that's it. We're at almost 40 minutes now, so I think I need to be done. That is everything I've worked on in the last month and a half. Um, 
Lots of stitching going on over here at my house. Lots of things. Um, the, the only plan that I have, I mean, I'm just gonna be working on Christmas stitching. So I will be working on my Heirloom Nativity Sampler. I will probably start working some more on my Brooks Books Advent Animals again, because I only have like six left. I don't know if I'm gonna finish them this year, but I'll probably work some more on those. And I really wanna pull my, um, he looks so scary. He has no eyeballs, that's really creepy. I'm sorry, I just wanted to show you, but he looks <laughs> totally terrifying. This is my um, Ship's Manor piece, the Holly and the Ivy, and I think I just have the pattern showing. Hold on, let me show it to you. I started this earlier this year, and it's not a very good picture. Holly and the Ivy. Um, by Ship's Manor, my two nutcrackers. So I'd really love to keep working on those again. You see, I'm working on this guy and he's missing his eyeballs, so he looks really scary. But I would really like to keep working on those. I think it's a really beautiful pattern and I haven't seen a lot of people stitch it, so I really wanna see what it looks like stitched. Um, but it's very gorgeous. So I wanna work on that. And I don't know if I'll have any more new starts for Christmas, but I have a lot of Christmassy stuff to work on. Um, so that is where we stand. I've been a finishing queen, and that's been really nice to get some big things done. I hope you all are doing great. Um, I hope you, like I said, if you're American, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, but I hope that you all have a wonderful and joyous December. Um, whether you celebrate any December holidays or not, I hope that it's not too stressful a time of year for you and that you get lots of stitching time. And I will see you guys next time, okay? Take care and I'll see you later. Bye.